I'm Dr. Frida. Is intermittent fasting safe? There are so many different diet trends and weight loss plans. And anytime you encounter someone who believes in a particular diet, whether you encounter them on social media or on infomercials or at the gym or at work, each person seems totally convinced that their plan is the best. And when it comes to intermittent fasting, I find that people who have been successful with losing weight with it are no less enthusiastic. Indeed, you can lose weight with intermittent fasting. There's no question. And there are even some studies to suggest that there are other health benefits even beyond the weight loss. The question is, is intermittent fasting safe? And that's what I'll be answering today. Is intermittent fasting a health risk? The science behind it all. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida, an MD who has been triple board certified. And today I'm going to answer the question, is intermittent fasting a health risk? And I will discuss the science behind it all. I will break down this conversation like so. I will give you the definition of intermittent fasting. I will talk about the different kinds of intermittent fasting. I'll break down the physiology, the science on how intermittent fasting can help you to lose weight. And I will go through the scientific data and discuss some of the potential benefits of intermittent fasting. Lastly, I will answer the question, is intermittent fasting safe? Is it a health risk? So what is the definition of intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is when you have a certain span of hours in a day or days during a week when you do not eat, when you fast. And there are several different categories or schedules for intermittent fasting. You can do daily time restricted eating. That is when for each day, there are a certain number of hours where you fast and a certain number of hours where you restrict yourself to eating only within that time. And there are different schedules for that. You can choose a 16-8 schedule where you fast for 16 hours, no food at all, and for eight hours, you eat. So for example, on each day, you may choose to fast for the 16 hours, but then from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. during that eight hour span, you will allow yourself to eat during that time and that time only. Or if you choose an 18-6 schedule, you may fast for 18 hours and then for just six hours a day, within that time only, you will eat, say from noon until 6 p.m. This is the daily time restricted eating. And then you can also have an intermittent fasting schedule where you choose alternate days to fast for the entire day. You can choose a 5-2 schedule where you have five days when you eat regular meals, but then you fast for two of those days. You may choose Monday and Thursday, for example. And on Mondays and Thursdays, if those are your fasting days, then you will not eat, but you perhaps will limit yourself to only one meal that's less than 500 calories. There are many more schedules than this, but these are just some of the different schedules with intermittent fasting. So how does intermittent fasting help you to lose weight? What's the physiology behind it? Well, when you fast, when you go without food, initially your body will burn the sugar. It will convert those easily accessible glucose stores into energy. So you'll burn off the sugar first. Then your body will start to burn fat. It will convert fat into energy. Specifically, the liver will convert fatty acids into ketones. And so this is how you end up losing weight when you go into fasting intermittently. The scientific studies have revealed that intermittent fasting can help one to lose weight. There's no question about that. But is intermittent fasting better than calorie restriction when it comes to losing weight? Well, according to a New England Journal of Medicine study that was published, the answer is no. In fact, you had two groups of patients. There were 139 patients randomized to two different groups. You had one group that had time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting and calorie restriction, while the other group only had calorie restriction. Both groups were eating the same amount of calories. The difference is that one did it with intermittent fasting, right? The other one, there was no specific time interval for eating, but they both had the same amount of calories. These patients were studied for one year. So this is one of the long-term studies for intermittent fasting. And what was found was that there was no significant difference between the group that did intermittent fasting and the group that just did the calorie restriction. 
no significant difference. And beyond that, they found that there was no difference in waist circumference, no difference in belly fat. Now, there have been other short-term studies prior to this study, which have revealed potential differences. But for this long-term study, it was found that there was no difference in the amount of weight loss with calorie restriction versus intermittent fasting. Still, more studies need to be done. So what are some of the other health benefits beyond weight loss of intermittent fasting? Well, the New England Journal of Medicine also published a review of multiple studies of intermittent fasting. And according to these studies, many of them were small studies. And some of these studies actually were with animal models like rats. But some of the potential benefits of intermittent fasting that were found include an improvement in inflammation in the body, an improvement in blood pressure, an improvement in blood sugar regulation. Some of the studies found that with intermittent fasting, there was a decrease in cholesterol or lipid levels. Please be sure to watch my video on how to unclog your arteries naturally after you finish watching this video. Some of the studies even suggested that memory could be improved. In fact, one of the animal model studies revealed that working memory in animals was improved in the group that did intermittent fasting. Some of these small intermittent fasting studies even suggest that there could be an improvement in asthma and multiple sclerosis and diabetes and other diseases associated with inflammation. Mind you, these studies tended to be small. And again, some of them are in animal models, which makes it difficult to translate the success in animals to the success in humans. All in all, it is inconclusive and we need more studies. Nevertheless, there are still potential benefits outside of weight loss with intermittent fasting. There is science that supports it, but it's not conclusive. Larger studies and longer term data are needed. So now I've talked about some of the benefits of intermittent fasting, some of the pros. Now let's talk about some of the cons. Yeah, let's, let's talk about some of the cons. Let's be a little negative for a moment. Some of the cons of intermittent fasting, and I'm sure you can probably guess, hunger. Yes, you might be hungry in the period when you're fasting, especially when you're just getting used to it. You may develop headaches, irritability. You may be hangry, basically, when you're doing the fasting. You may also get bad breath during the fasting periods. That's just, that's a reality. That can happen. Another con of intermittent fasting can be cravings. You might just be sitting there starving and craving different things. And you can even get malnutrition if you're not careful to get all the proper calories, proteins, fruits, vegetables during the eating phases, you could develop malnutrition. And another con is that you could have low energy while you're fasting. The good thing about forming habits is that most people develop a habit after two to four weeks of the same repetitive behavior. And so after the habit is formed, some of these initial cons will likely get better. So now for the question of the hour, is intermittent fasting safe? Is intermittent fasting a health risk? Well, the answer is that it depends. It depends. Intermittent fasting may be safe for a certain portion of the population. You certainly want to consult with your physician before starting an intermittent fasting plan. But truth of the matter is there are certain people who will be able to do intermittent fasting safely. It depends on how long the interval is of the fasting and how well you do with making sure you get the proper nutrition, the proper hydration. Again, consult with your physician. Conversely, there are definitely people who should not do intermittent fasting. And these people the risks will very likely outweigh the benefits. One group, if you have an eating disorder or if you have a predisposition to getting an eating disorder. When you have the intermittent fasting, this time-restricted eating, and you have a very specific parameter of when you're allowed to eat, if you make a mistake, if you're not perfect, and of course, last I checked, no one is perfect. And so you are likely to have some mishaps where you eat a little early or you eat a little late. Well, if you are a person with an eating disorder or a predisposition to developing an eating disorder, then if you make a mistake and you don't eat exactly when you're supposed to eat, well, now the eating may be associated with anxiety and shame. And this could potentially trigger an eating disorder. And again, when you think about being restricted, restricted and fasting for so many hours or even days, if you're someone who is predisposed to binging, then these intense restrictions could potentially trigger a binge. 
And then when you think about recovery, say you're someone who speaks about having an eating disorder in the past tense. If you say that you used to have anorexia nervosa or you used to have bulimia, part of the recovery, as you know, is associating eating with your body getting used to listening to its cues. You want to learn how to follow your body's natural cues for hunger and the cues for when you're actually satisfied. Well, intermittent fasting is the exact opposite. You are being taught to ignore your body's cues for when you're hungry. And so again, if you have an eating disorder or if you are predisposed to having an eating disorder, then intermittent fasting may be a health risk for you. Even for people who choose to do intermittent fasting, during the eating period, when you're supposed to have regular foods, you want to focus on a heart healthy diet. Please be sure to watch my YouTube video on a heart healthy diet after you finish watching this video. Another group where intermittent fasting may pose a potential health risk is to diabetics, especially type one diabetics. If you are a diabetic, then you are likely taking a medication that will lower your blood sugar, right? You may be on insulin, which lowers the blood sugar, or you may be taking certain oral pills, certain pills that will lower the blood sugar. When you're taking medicines like this, especially when it's long acting medication, well, your body is dependent upon you eating. If not, you can develop low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. So intermittent fasting can pose a health risk to diabetics. Again, you definitely want to consult with your physician. Intermittent fasting can also pose a health risk to pregnant ladies and to ladies who are breastfeeding. And athletes, athletes who are training, especially if you are in an, an intense training program, the intermittent fasting can pose a health risk for you. When you are training hard, you need to be well hydrated. You need to have plenty of protein. But if you are on a day where you're fasting or only having 500 calories while you're out doing two a days, three a days, however many a days these, these into these athletes do, then the intermittent fasting can certainly pose a health risk. If you are a patient with kidney stones, and yes, remember I am a board certified nephrologist, a kidney doctor. If you have kidney stones, then intermittent fasting can pose a risk because oftentimes, especially if you're a person who associates drinking with eating, there are times when you're fasting where you could get dehydrated. Well, dehydration can definitely, definitely exacerbate kidney stone formation. And if you have GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, then the intermittent fasting could also pose a health risk to you. It could exacerbate that condition. Intermittent fasting can also pose a health risk to children. When you are a growing child dependent upon calories as you're going through your development, if you are being restricted, that could pose a health risk. Lastly, elderly patients. If you are an elderly patient or if you are frail, then the intermittent fasting can certainly pose a health risk for you. So now I've given you the science behind intermittent fasting and we've discussed when intermittent fasting may actually be beneficial and when intermittent fasting may pose a health risk. If you found this information to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like this video and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't stop there. Please make sure that you also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Doc Frida. I also have a podcast, Healthy Happy Life Podcast with Dr. Frida. Make sure you check out those episodes. And of course, don't forget to purchase my book, Under Pressure, A Guide to Controlling High Blood Pressure. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. And I want you to be sure to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.